The devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria have killed thousands of people and displaced many thousands more. We're joined now by Avi Shifton, who started a relief effort called Take Shelter. Avi, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Tell us what inspired you, Avi. This is a noble effort. Sure. So I've been working on these internet activism related projects for many years. I got my start when the pandemic um, hit the United States and I developed this website called uh, ncov2019.live, which is a terrible name, but uh, it was tracking COVID-19 months before it was even called COVID-19. Um, and that website became one of the biggest coronavirus trackers in the entire world, used by over 600 million people. Um, and through working on that project, I realized the internet could really travel around the entire world and distribute these humanitarian tools. So um, when the war in Ukraine broke out, I developed this website where if you want to be a host family for all these displaced refugees, you could sign up um, on the site and then refugees could go on this site and enter in where they are or where they're headed and, and connect with these host families. And that website housed over 100,000 refugees. And um, that kind of only continued my uh, belief that the internet was an incredible underutilized humanitarian tool. So I started a nonprofit called Internet Activism, where we kind of do these, you know, uh, response digital humanitarian projects, uh, but on a much bigger scale with the funding of a real organization with real partnerships, etc. So um, when crisis struck in Turkey and Syria, there was an entire organization um, with a team of engineers that know how to respond uh, digitally to humanitarian crisis, and we developed Take Shelter, which is very similar to the Ukrainian one, except um, focused more on the Middle East region, where people can sign up as, again, like a host family offering to take in people that are displaced by the earthquake. Um, and then people that are displaced, again, they, they have smartphones, they have an internet connection, they can go on this website, translate it into Turkish, Arabic, English, etc. And um, just type in what city they're in, or, or uh, you know, where they're headed and just connect with these host families and uh, it's been pretty successful so far we've got dozens and dozens of listings and many people have been housed through the website already now money tv is seen in about 75 countries around the world so this can work in any country um yeah you I mean you can host uh earthquake uh, victims in really any country the ukrainian site we had people housed everywhere from new zealand israel uh you know japan everywhere in the entire world now, in the aftermath of the earthquake, I imagine infrastructure is pretty devastated. Uh, how, how do uh, refugees find their way to your website if they have a difficulty? Um, I mean, you can just go to takeshelter.org uh, and, you know, access the website on your smartphone, on your TV, on your computer, on anything. Um, it's, uh, yeah. And most people are sharing this through social media, on WhatsApp groups, Telegram, Facebook, etc. Um, again, because it's like, like a, a digital tool, there's there's nothing to download, um, there's nothing to load at all. You just go directly to this link that can be shared so easily through word of mouth or you know text messages or anything like that. Are you working with authorities or governments to get access to refugees? Yeah, we work pretty closely with groups like the Syrian Emergency Task Force um, and other groups that are just kind of locally on the ground. When uh, we were working on this Ukrainian project, for example, um, we worked with the Chabad network across Europe because they've got kind of like a, a, a community initiative in almost every single small city um, throughout all of Europe, which was incredibly useful for the distribution of this idea. So what we kind of have is like they have like busloads of refugees coming out of this country. And we made these like little cards that kind of had like a QR code that you can scan and go directly to the website um, that was handed out to bus drivers and, and people on the bus. Well, I was just going to ask you about travel for hosts, getting to host families uh, by refugees. How do you how do you handle that? Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? Well, I was going to ask you the question about traveling to host families, refugees. Right. How, how, how is that handled? Right. Many host families usually offer to help with transportation, and there's a lot of local groups that are helping with that, too. It's kind of like a joint effort between um other people that are offering transportation versus we're also you know offering host families we want to include a lot more than just housing on this platform uh eventually we want to add things like transportation but also a step further than that for example there's a lot of therapists out there that want to contribute maybe trauma support to a kid who just got his house destroyed by an earthquake right um there's not really a, a way to do that usually when crisis strikes all a regular citizen can do is 
donate money to an organization or sign a petition or maybe volunteer across the world on the ground. That's pretty unrealistic for most people. But again, a lot of people have extra room in their house. Maybe they've you know, got extra skills as a as a math tutor or an English tutor, and they can, can you know, uh, continue a refugee's education. We want to like do a lot more with this platform than just housing because refugees need a lot more than just a place to stay. How do you handle things like, you know, legal, legally, like uh, visas, passports, that type of thing? Right. Well, I mean, through the for, for the refugees themselves. Exactly. Um, this Take Shelter project is primarily um, domestic based. So, for example, a lot of Turkish people that are displaced by the earthquake want to stay with local Turkish families across the country um, with the Ukrainian project. We had a lot of people offering to help with immigration, lawyer support type of stuff. So filling out asylum paperwork, et cetera. Um, yeah, you could you on the website, you can usually filter by things like uh, whether you need disability support or legal support or all these different kinds of things. So all the information people need is at takeshelter.org? Yep. Avi Schiffman, we, this uh, is a very noble effort that you've undertaken. Uh, really congratulate you on such a humanitarian effort. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm excited to see what the internet can do.